Hey guys, how's it going? This is Greg. Uh, so if you are familiar with some of the work we do for the login screens, you know that everything we do needs to be loopable. Um, our login screens are typically a five second loop and everything within them loops back onto itself seamlessly. Um, so sometimes this can be tricky depending on what effects that you're using. So I figured it'd be cool to do a series of videos showing you how we use some of the common effects and uh, how we get them to loop properly. Uh, and the first one I want to take a look at is Particular. Um, these these uh, techniques can kind of be used for just about any uh, particle generation system, um, but our plugin of choice is Particular, so that's one, the one that I'm going to go with. All right, so you can see here we've got some looping uh, particles kind of falling down from the sky. Uh, let's dive into how we do this. All right, so I'm just going to hit uh, Control N. We'll create a new composition. Uh, we'll call this uh, loop test and 24 frames per second, 10 seconds long. Uh, what we're going to be focusing on here is a five second loop, so I'm going to make a composition that's twice that, that's 10 seconds. Okay, so let's uh, control Y, we'll make a new solid, and we'll name it particular A, and we'll make this comp size. Okay, so let's pull up particular, Trap code particular. And was it this uh, 100 particles per second? Sure, that's fine. So let's see what we've got here. We've basically got particles just flowing out from the center. Um, so that's fine. So what I want to focus on is the five second loop that we're working with here. So I'm going to actually set my workspace from five seconds by hitting the B button, five seconds to 10 seconds. This is going to be my working area, OK? Um, so, basically, what we're going to be doing here is creating something like this, where we have two layers of particular, and as one layer, layer A, is dying out, the second layer, layer B, is being born. So, if we go across our five-second timeline here, um, we've got one decreasing as the other is increasing. Okay? So, let's go back to our loop test, and we're going to create that. So. First things first, let's set, uh, just so the particles last that long, we'll set the lifespan to five seconds. And we see they go five. And uh, let us set the size over life to come in and then fade out so they're not stopping abruptly. Okay, so now they're being born nicely and dying out at five seconds. So here's the trick. We want to go to our five second mark then go one frame before that. I'm going to hit the page up button. So now I'm at 423. I'm going to set a keyframe here on my particles per second. Then I'm going to go one frame forward and set a keyframe at five seconds it's to zero. So that means particles are stopping being generated right here at five second mark. So as we scroll through we see that they all die out and stop by the time we get to our five second loop. Okay? So, the real easy thing we need to do here is simply Control D, duplicate this layer. I'm going to rename this particles B. And then we're going to move it forward in time to the five second mark. So now at five seconds, particle A is starting to die out and particle B is getting born so that if we scroll through this, or let this RAM preview, you can see already we have a seamlessly uh, looping part of the system. And it's really just that easy. And you can adjust this to however many seconds that you need the loop to be. So if it's three seconds, you would start at the three second mark, four seconds, start at the four second, and so on. Now the cool thing about this is that this is really easy to update and change. So let's say that I want to make this into a snow field. I can just get rid of this top layer. You can see my uh, keyframes here, telling it to uh, to adjust the particles per second. So if I go make any adjustments to this layer, say let's go, let's turn this into a box, and let's move that box up to the top, and we'll make the emitter size longer on the x-axis, and maybe on the z-axis as well. And uh, let's bring down the size a little bit to say three. Let's see. 
That's looking good. Uh, let's give it a little bit of uh, downward movement. So we'll go down to our air and we'll push it down on the Y so that there's uh, wind pressing the particles down. And yeah, fit these fine. We'll also give it a little bit of spin amplitude. Let's crank the spin amplitude up to 50 so we get a little bit of motion in there. And you can see we've got this snow that falls down and fades out. So all I have to do is go back to five seconds and then control D and then to move this over so that the beginning starts at five seconds, I just hit open bracket on my keyboard and it pops over. And now if I preview this, now I've got seamlessly looping snow falling down. And that's really all there is to it. Pretty easy and it's going to be applied to a variety of different uh, circumstances and situations. We use this all the time. Alright, well, I hope that was uh, some good information and I will see you next time. Bye.